I want to first apologize for being a few minutes late. Um, I was on the floor asking me for unanimous consent to move the Supreme Court security bill that was passed by the Senate by 100 votes, and it was denied. I know the speaker just had a press conference in here. I'm told she said nobody is of threat over the weekend. I don't know how she can say that, knowing that you just captured a person who wanted to kill Kavanaugh and his family. So was he not in any threat yesterday? Was he not in any threat after Schumer made his threats on the Supreme Court? Or Jen Psaki said it was the president's position to go to those homes? I have no idea why the Democrats have held that bill for one month. I have no idea. I think they might be playing politics. And speaking of that, Speaker Pelosi's select committee on January 6th is unlike any other committee in American history. In fact, it is the most political and least legitimate committee in American history. It has used congressional subpoenas to attack Republicans, violate due process, and infringe on the political speech of private citizens. It has actually been caught altering evidence, including the text messages of our ranking member, Jim Jordan. It has permanently damaged the House and divided this country. And let's be honest, it is a smokescreen for Democrats to push their radical agenda. You read it in just in Axios just this week. The battles internally, because what do they want to do? They want to federalize the elections, and they're talking about their real outcome of want, what they want to achieve, abolish the electoral college. All the while that the Democrats are ignoring really what is affecting the American people. The highest inflation in more than 40 years. Record high gas prices, doubled since President Biden has taken office. Lack of baby formula, unsecure border, fentanyl coming across, now the number one killer of Americans between the ages of 18 and 45. Now let's be very clear. The violence at the Capitol that day was wrong, and we have repeatedly denounced it. But keeping the Capitol safe is not the point of Pelosi's illegitimate select committee. From the beginning, the select committee refused to investigate the real circumstances that led to the riot, including the lack of security around the Capitol. They also ignored the left-wing mob violence, which led to riots and loss of life across the country that summer. When House Republicans proposed investigating these facts, as you'll remember, on January 12th, we put it to the floor and every single Democrat voted no. When I sent Pelosi a letter after they voted no, she did not respond for three months. Then she jumped to create a select committee. Not only that, she rejected the minority's picks to be on the committee. That's going against 232 years of a tradition in this house. You reject the minority to have a say in the committee. Who did she reject? Congressman Jim Banks, a distinguished Afghanistan veteran. She rejected Congressman Jim Jordan. He's the ranking and maybe soon to be chair of Judiciary Committee. Now, why she rejected these qualified Republicans, she appointed radical Democrats. You ever spend any time to see who's on it? She appointed Chairman Thompson, who, to be clear, objected to the presidential electors in 2005. She appointed Congressman Raskin who also objected to the presidential electors in 2017. But let's not forget what else he said. He called for President Trump's impeachment 
Not during his term in office, but between him when he was elected and being sworn in. And then she appointed Congressman Schiff. Just saying that name should be enough. But we watched what Schiff has done to our country. The years of lying about the Russian hoax. The changing of evidence we found as he went and the denying of the Hunter Biden laptop. You know, our future rests on the ability of Americans to trust our political system, to have safer streets, to have affordable food and gas, and to have confidence that their elected officials are listening to real concerns. Now, Democrats are using January 6th to avoid accountability for making the, the whole nation less safe and less prosperous. You know it, you feel it, you see it every single day. Every single day, the food prices go up and along with the gas. Not sure if we caught another individual coming across the border illegal that's on the terrorist watch list. Not sure if there's anybody else that wants to come across the border illegal to try to assassinate former President Bush. Not sure if the plane from Australia bringing goat milk to try to feed the children of America. That's the America we have today. I don't see any prime time hearing set for gas price, for battling inflation, for feeding our children, for making the streets safer. You know, even in the hometown of the speaker this Tuesday, mm -hmm. they recalled their DA based upon the democratic policies of not upholding safe streets. And don't think it was Republicans rallied together, because you know how many Republicans are registered in San Francisco? 6.7%. But lo and behold, I'm not sure if they're using taxpayer money to hire a former ABC executive who took his time to withhold information about Epstein, or if they're doing it for their ice cream. But I do know the American public will not be fooled. And I do know the Republicans will not be deterred, that we will continue to focus on the parts that America wants us to. To make America energy independent. To make our streets safe and our schools again. To secure our border. To know that America and the next century will be ours. With that, even though Speaker Pelosi has rejected Republicans' ability to participate, we said we'd get to the bottom of this. We said we would not rush it under the rug, and we have not. We continue to investigate. Leading that, which would be our ranking member on this committee, is Chairman Jim Banks, who is a veteran to Afghanistan, serves as the chair of our largest conference inside the Republican conference and has continued to work on to make sure that this building will be safe and in the future this will never happen again. I give you Jim Banks. I thank the leader. And as he said, the American people know that this select committee is already a fraud. Democrats aren't investigating January 6th. That's already very abundantly clear. As the leader said, they're trying to use this select committee as a Trojan horse to abolish the Electoral College, to intimidate President Trump's aides, to block him from ever appearing on the ballot again, and to prevent his supporters from participating in American democracy. Gas today in my hometown in Columbia City, Indiana is $5.25 a gallon. But in Washington, the Democrats' top priority is an hour-long made-for-TV special attacking President Trump. Americans aren't buying it. Voters see that even after nearly two years of Joe Biden, the Democrats still refuse to lead. They refuse to take responsibility for the serious economic difficulties that they have created. And the Democrats refuse to help the American people and families who are hurting because of their policies. But the select committee is ignoring its most basic duty the Democrats aren't asking the simple questions about what happened on January 6th. Before their investigation even started, Speaker Pelosi 
turned the select committee into an unprecedented sham. She blocked Jim Jordan and I for, to serve on the select committee. It's never happened before in American history. And no speaker in history has ever done something as partisan as that, as what Speaker Pelosi has done. But why does she do it? She did it because she's afraid. Speaker Pelosi doesn't really want a real investigation into January 6th. That's why her sergeant at arms refused to cooperate with a bipartisan Senate uh, committee investigation. She was afraid of what they would in uncover. But House Republicans continued to conduct our own ad hoc investigation into January 6th. Our goal is to answer the questions that this select committee is ignoring. Questions that you're not going to hear about on the primetime special tonight. Questions that must be answered to keep Congress and the Capitol Police officers safe in the future. And here are the questions that you should be demanding answers from, from the select committee members as well. First of all, how is it possible that the Capitol Police, we now know, was half-staffed because of COVID on January 6th? Second, why were our officers under-equipped on that day? Why were some officers forced to face down a riot without helmets or expired equipment? Why were the Capitol Police officers never trained to handle a riot, even after all of the riots that were ongoing in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital in the summer of 2020? Did Speaker Pelosi communicate with the House Sergeant at Arms on January 6th or in the days leading up to the riot? Why didn't the Capitol Police's intelligence unit raise the alarm about potential violence when they had intelligence going back weeks before January 6th that told them that something was going to happen? Why did the FBI deploy commandos to Quantico on January 3rd with shoot to kill authority but fail to send the United States Capitol Police a single threat assessment or intellig intelligence bulletin. Was Speaker Pelosi involved in the decision to delay National Guard assistance on January 6th? Those are serious and real questions that this committee, committee refuses to even ask. Speaker Pelosi doesn't want to answer those questions because she knows that the answers to those questions leave a trail of breadcrumbs right back to her office underscoring her negligence, her lack of leadership as the Speaker of the House. Those are serious questions that we will continue to dig into. Our report will be coming and it will be finished in the weeks to come, and we will present to you serious issues and recommendations of what Congress and the next Speaker of the House can do to provide better leadership and secure the United States Capitol so that something like January 6th never happens again. With that, thank you. I yield to Whip Scalise. Thank you, Jim. And Jim Banks just raised some very serious questions that should be answered by the January 6th Commission, but they're not. And they're not for a very specific reason, and that's because Nancy Pelosi doesn't want those questions to be answered. In fact, she took the unprecedented step of kicking Jim Banks and Jim Jordan off of the January 6th Committee because they were going to ask those questions that a lot of people would like the answers to. So when you hear them talking about it's all about getting to the truth, if they really believed in getting to the truth, they would have kept Jim Banks and Jim Jordan on the committee to ask those questions and get the truth. But that's not what this has been about. Never was to Nancy Pelosi. It was always about politics. And if there was any doubt that it was about politics, Nancy Pelosi removed that doubt when she took the unprecedented step of kicking the Republicans off of the committee that Leader McCarthy had appointed. And so it begs the question, as we go around the country, as I go around my district, we're all being asked the same questions. The questions our constituents are asking is, what is Congress going to do to help alleviate the problems that are hurting families in South Louisiana, all across the country? What are they going to do to lower inflation, to lower gas prices, to secure America's border? That's the questions families are asking me and my colleagues around the country. I was just on the floor a few minutes ago and asked Leader Hoyer if he would bring up a bill that we have. House Republicans have put together a broad package of legislation to lower gas prices. 
and they refuse, Nancy Pelosi and all of her minions refuse to bring bills like that to the floor. And so as you're watching tonight, however many watch, I think it's important to note what primetime lineup is not included by Nancy Pelosi. Is Nancy Pelosi going to hold a primetime hearing on inflation? I'd sure like to see that. I think a lot of Americans would. Is Nancy Pelosi going to hold a primetime hearing on lowering gas prices? They've refused to so far. They won't even bring a bill to the floor that will lower gas prices. And everybody knows what needs to happen to lower gas prices. Because just two years ago, we were paying about $2 a gallon at the pump. And today we're paying way more than double that. In many places, well over $5 a gallon when we know the answer. And it's not Joe Biden going to Saudi Arabia and begging OPEC, begging monopolies, begging dictators, begging Putin to produce more oil. When the oil we need to secure America's energy security, as well as our economic security, is right here beneath our feet. We've got the energy here. And by the way, we produce it cleaner than anywhere else in the world. And so whatever his carbon footprint is going to be to go to fly to Saudi Arabia to talk about saving the planet by asking them to produce energy because he's beholden to the radical left who don't want to produce energy in America, why don't we have a hearing on that? Why don't we have a hearing on the border crisis? We could maybe invite Vice President Kamala Harris, who Joe Biden put in charge of it. She's yet to go to the border. This crisis is not just at our southern border. It's touching every community in America. The fentanyl that's killing thousands of young kids every single year, that fentanyl's coming across our southern border because Joe Biden has turned operational control of America's border over to drug cartels. Where's that hearing? Baby formula. There was just a report yesterday that came out that said Joe Biden's FDA knew last year that there was going to be a crisis with baby formula. He didn't even have an FDA commissioner until just a few months ago. He went a whole year without an FDA commissioner, and you wonder why the FDA was a rudderless ship under Joe Biden. Why don't we have a hearing on that during prime time? Of course, we know that this has always been about politics. Tonight, you're going to see it's about politics. And most importantly, the questions that Jim Banks her raised are not going to be asked tonight and should be. And with that, I want to bring up our conference chair, Elise Stefan. Thank you to the whip. Nancy Pelosi's sham committee is illegitimate, and its sole purpose is to punish Democrats' political opponents. It will not prevent another January 6th from happening. It is not about finding out why Nancy Pelosi left the Capitol so ill-prepared on that day. And it does absolutely nothing to address the numerous crises Americans are suffering from every single day because of Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi's radical far-left agenda. The truth is, House Democrats have no agenda for Americans and no real solutions to the problems that we face on a daily basis. And they are desperately, shamelessly trying to change the narrative. But the American people are smart. They see this for exactly what it is, a desperate partisan distraction, a circus to focus on, to move the focus away from the issues that actually impact people's lives. House Republicans, we will continue to focus on the issues that matter to the American people and to how to solve the numerous crises Joe Biden and House Democrats' agenda has created. Historically high gas prices that have now doubled since Joe Biden took office. Over 70% of our nation's baby formula is out of stock. In my home district, I have a nine-month-old, they are rationing baby formula. This is the United States of America, folks. This is unacceptable, and it's directly because of Joe Biden. Inflation is at a 40-year high, higher than any point in my lifetime. Violent crime continues to skyrocket because of Democrats' soft-on-crime policies, and one of, the, one of possibly the largest migrant caravans ever is headed to our southern border. House Republicans have an agenda and are focused on these issues. House Democrats are focusing on this partisan witch hunt. And I'm proud to turn it over to our leader, Leader McCarthy. Let's open up for some questions. Yes, sir. Peter McCarthy, uh, Mr. Banks posed this question for Speaker Pelosi. Would you be asking the same questions to Mitch McConnell? He also had an appointee on the Capitol Police Board, the Senate Sergeant at Arms. Will you ask them those same questions you want about Capitol security that day? Yes, because we want to get to the bottom of why this Capitol was so 
ill-prepared. Um, there's reports that um, was offered National Guard as early as January 2nd. We do not know why they weren't here. Um, I've seen intel reporting after this. It watched that uh, the crowd got out of control. People were warned ahead of time. They were offering of a National Guard. We'd like to know to the bottom of why they weren't there. Jonathan, how are you? Thank you. Um, can you just clarify something? Do you believe that Joe Biden was the legitimate victor of the 2020 election? And do you believe that Donald Trump is just flat wrong when he says the election was stolen? Look, uh, we've answered this question a, a long time. Joe Biden is the president. I think you can look that there's a lot of problems still within the election process. They just arrested a former Democratic congressman just the other, was it yesterday in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia? Um, and as we find a lot more information out there, we want to make sure more people have the ability to vote and that it's as secure and with the election where we go. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, your question. Your question was, was it legitimate? Was Donald Trump wrong when he says the election was stolen? You know, Jonathan, we talked about this a long time. I've already answered that question. Well, what, Thank what you. Was the answer? Is Donald Thank Trump you. We'll move on now. Thank you. Very the election was stolen. That, that, that's the basis of this. Can Thank you. So you won't answer that. Jonathan, I've answered it numerous times. I know you have a microphone. I know what you want to do. I've already answered the questions with you many times. Thank, is, is he wrong when he says thank you for your time. Go right ahead. Can I get a show of hands on the stage who plans to watch the hearing tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, Minority Leader McCarthy. Do you have, do, does the committee have, a, does your, do your members have any idea? of when your alternative report will actually come out uh, and, and if any other member, and, if any, and, if, and how many people are actually cooperating with the uh, with Mr. Banks' alternative investigation. So if you're asking if we've already have on Amazon for people to purchase the report and the date. No, I know, but that's what the Democrats have. So, I mean, if you're wondering if, it's, if ours is going to be political like that, no. But our report will come out uh, soon and we'll let you know when it is. Yes. You've enumerated your concerns with this committee, but even still, we have seen numerous members from the Trump White House, even some members of the president's own family, former president, that is, appear before his committee. So why not testify? Why not be transparent? Well, let's, let's raise that question, all right? Am I transparent? So the committee asked if I would come talk to them. So I sent them a letter to ask what they want to talk about. They never responded. What they said publicly went out there, they said they wanted to talk about my conversation with the president on January 6th. So on January 6th, when I had that conversation with the president, I then went on three networks. One with, I think I was even with you, Jonathan. I had a longer discussion with the American public than my conversation with the president. So there was nothing to be added. To go about, and then the argument of whether you could subpoena members themselves it purely looks to me like it's political. We sent a letter back, raised a lot of questions about this. Because the first hand that you'd have to realize is, if you go to Quinn Watkins, the Supreme Court has told the Congress about the separations of power. Does the committee have a legitimate legislative purpose? Yes, but we have a separation of power. The legitimate legislative purpose would be exactly what the Senate bipartisan committee did. They believe they want to be like an attorney general or something. That's why it's done. The committee was passed the rule by Congress to say it would have 13 members. It does not have 13 members. The committee said that they could either have you come in or write you questions. We said we'd answer. They would not do that. The committee says in the setup that they would confer with the ranking member. There is no ranking member because I have not appointed anyone. So there are so many bases of why this political committee does not have a true standing and the basis of where they're going. Think about this for one moment. They hire somebody from ABC who withheld information about Epstein. They knew it and they still hired it. Are they using taxpayer money for that? They set up watching parties where they give free ice cream. Who's paying for, for that? The DCCC? They pick prime time when, the, when gasoline has doubled since the president has been in. Inflation we have not seen in 41 years. You're flying in goat milk from Australia to, to try to feed the American babies. Will they bring any of that up? No, it's a, it's a political driven committee. They already have the date set on Amazon to buy it now. Why did they prolong it? Why do they pick daylight? Why are they picking before the election? 
It's the only thing they have when the American people are hungry to solve so many other problems. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Leader, on guns. Yes. Uh, there was some heartbreaking testimony yesterday and the day before from families who have suffered devastating losses in the past couple of weeks alone. <coughs> and you and many members here advocated for more school safety funding, hiring of schools, looking at mental health. That seems to be something that by everyone is talking about. In the Senate, in addition to that, though, there is conversation about what to do to figure out who in this kind of profile that we see, of young men especially, mm -hmm. um, how you can figure out um, who might act violently, how you can flag that. Yeah. Um, can you talk to me about your thinking on whether incentives for red flag laws could be helpful or not, and what that could look like, including your due process concerns? I know you have those, but is there any kind of red flag incentive that you think would be helpful? And I ask this because families are looking for something more. They agree with what you're saying on schools and mental health, but they want more than that. And what are you willing to do? I don't think it's, I just don't think family. I have a family too. I think everybody in America wants this. I think the devastation we're seeing is horrendous. I, I actually wish the House would do exactly what the Senate, to sit down and have a discussion. We were back in session on Tuesday at 6.30 and we voted on bills on Wednesday. It's the same thing like the committee. It was a political show. Why would you bring up a red flag bill and not bring anything about due process? And look, don't think it's from Republicans. I was watching Tulsi Gabbard a minute ago on, on television talking about this as well, who was a Democrat nominee for president. If we are able to find and prevent, everybody's there. There wasn't one mental health place here. There wasn't one discussion ahead of time. There was no time to work together. I was just talking to uh, Senator Cornyn. This is the way to handle it. Find all the facts. You know, I, I want to highlight Congressman Tony Gonzalez. This is his district. His district has gone through so much. And he's been on the ground there listening to families, listening to what's going on. But it's just like everywhere else. We've watched this tragic situation happen before. You know what we found? A shooting in Texas, another one. This individual came in and shot up a church. The church is back just now like a museum. You know what we found? This individual was in the military, dishonorably discharged, abused his wife, never should have been able to have a weapon. And when we were in the majority, finding those facts, we passed the fixed nicks to make sure that would be on the record. There is a way to go about doing this, and that's sitting down, making sure you're dealing with all the issues at once instead of playing a political game. And unfortunately, that's what Nancy Pelosi chose. And I know from that same point, this is the same speaker that told us the Supreme Court is safe this weekend, but they weren't safe yesterday. And she has a bill on the floor right now that 100% senators voted for that she wouldn't bring. Yes, sir, back there. Yes. crafted by your own ranking member, John Katko, to investigate the facts and circumstances of January 6th. Okay, well, let me that, explain that, that to that, you. That commission would have been devoid of current politicians and would have required a bipartisan buy-in to issue subpoenas. Okay, can on January 12th. Can you explain why all, all of you... Yes, uh, as soon as you're done, I'll explain. Davis voted against that, and uh, what uh, in the, you all are now doing your own investigation into, into the 6th. Um, what... Uh, what, in your, in your opinion, uh, brought all of those rioters to the Capitol on that day? Okay, so let me answer your question. You say we voted against the commission. On January 12th, we offered the commission and put it on the floor, and every single Democrat voted against it. It was on 9-11. Pelosi wouldn't bring it up, so we sent her a letter three months later before she responded. I'm not sure if you'd been into these press conferences before that I do weekly, but we would talk about that week after week. When Nancy Pelosi wanted to negotiate about it, she wanted to eliminate what we could look at. She wanted the scope to be very narrow. In that time while she waited, we lost another officer on the gate over here by a terrorist attack to run over and had a, gun, and had a knife. She said we couldn't look at that. We couldn't look at what had happened in America just that short time before the riots in the streets that had been going over. Riots throughout, riots that were in this city as well. And what she did, I'll answer your question, thank you. And what we did within that process, we wanted to have a 9-11. We wanted to have a scope. We offered it. We put it on the floor. We voted for it. Pelosi played nothing but politics, delayed it. And then when they moved to this equation, we offered people to be on this committee. 
That's the rules to select committee to the minority to put people on. For 232 years, that's been the history of this House. But Nancy Pelosi said no. Why? Well, she didn't participate with the Senate Bipartisan Committee. Maybe she didn't want people to be able to question. It's American history. Look across the street at the Supreme Court. You got that statue of a lady with a blindfold with a scale to be fair, to be equal. She wanted to make sure it was not equal. And she wanted to pick and choose who could be on that we didn't have the right. Never before in the history it allowed that to be. So no, we didn't participate with her political scam. We offered it six days after January 6th, a 9-11 committee, right at the way it happened. Yes? Um, Leader McCarthy, you said both publicly and privately after January 6th that you thought Trump bore some responsibility for the attack. Do you still feel like he was in any way responsible for justice? Look, I've answered that many times. I thought everybody in the country bared some responsibility based upon what has been going on, the riots on the streets, the others. Having spent time and seeing what's going forward, what happened on January 2nd when the National Guard was offered to protect this Capitol? Prior to January 6th, we had a problem at this Capitol where they broke through the police on the Kavanaugh hearings. What change took there? There's a legislative purpose for Congress to look at. You have a separation of powers. Pelosi continues to play politics. Just the same reason why she won't do anything to let America become energy independent. She won't do anything to make sure those Supreme Court justices are going to be safe over the weekend. By unanimous consent, that's all it took, one member on the floor, to say that. Yes, ma'am. Should voters punish <clears throat> members who voted in favor of the January 6th commission? Well, I don't know, because Thompson, oh, voted in favor of the January 6th commission? No, I, no, yeah, members yeah. have a right to vote however they want. Yeah, That's but should they, yeah. and also about Chris Jacobs. Chris Jacobs couldn't run after what he said about assault weapons. That's not true. So what is your... That's not true. He well, could run. He, he made a decision. He, he was, exactly, but what is your opinion about My that opinion decision if, not if, to run if, after he got such backlash from members of the party and member voters? I don't remember saying one thing about Chris Jacobs. Right, uh, my so belief is Chris Jacobs ran again, he would have got reelected. Yes. With Newsmax, many in the media and Democrats characterize what happened on January 6th as an insurrection, and it's become really the de facto term to describe the events of that day. Was January 6th an insurrection? And if not, what what words, what term would you use to describe what that Look, day what was? Look, January 6th happened on the Capitol was wrong. Those that broke in the Capitol, we're wrong and sh should be dealt with. And that's exactly what we have in the process that the police, the FBI, to deal with. The role within Congress, we should look at why we're so ill-prepared that day and how do we protect it. Yes, sir. Senator McCarthy, why do you think people stormed the Capitol and do you think that motivation deserves to be investigated? Yeah, that's what the FBI did. Thank you. Two, two more questions here. You, you, a number of your members, I don't know if you said this specifically, a number of your members have said, if you take the majority, you'll launch investigations into Hunter Biden. I'm curious what the legislative angle is on that. And number two, what will you do if people look at your investigations, if you're in the majority, and say, they're illegitimate, we're not going to we're not going to respond to this? Because we won't be illegitimate. We won't say Democrats won't be on committee. We won't, we won't uh, issue subpoenas for political, going after our political opponents. We'll do exactly what Congress is supposed to do. We'll uphold the Constitution. If there's a place for us to investigate, we'll investigate. Yes, sir. Um, if Republicans take over the House next year, would, would you commit to holding a vote on that independent uh, commission legislation that you initially proposed in January of, of 2021 to have this I don't predetermine anything. We've got an investigation right now. We'll see what that turns up. Paul Kane, how are you today? Fantastic. You in a good mood? Sure. I worry about you sometimes. <laughs> Then President Trump to questions that John phone wrote. call phone call okay um, you want to ask if I talked to him today Trump no oh, okay. Trump well, you can normal, that's your normal question Trump rejects your version of that Trump what part does he reject he told the authors Jonathan Martin and Alex Burns that there was no angry call at all and that your description of the call that was on air and that you told other members was wrong and they asked why would he mischaracterize the phone call. And he told them on the record in an interview, inferiority complex. 
Mm. Who was right? I don't know. Do you Trump think I have an inferiority complex? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You do. I don't know. Could be. Who's, who else? Right. I, I, I think you, you can judge whatever. There's two people on the call, and two people know what happened on the call. I spoke to the American public. They could judge whatever I said. Out why you haven't participated in the investigation when they've asked. No, no, no. I've been denied the right to participate in the investigation. So um, your lawyer had sent a letter yes. with questions. Have they gotten pages. back to you? And if so, if if so, will you commit to participate either by written testimony or in person? I've never said I wouldn't participate. You know, when the very first came up, um, I said you put the Republican members on, then it's a legitimate committee. They, had, they answered me, but they didn't answer all my questions. So I sent them another letter, and they haven't answered that. Do you plan to make that letter public? I can. There's no problem. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Last ma question. What are, the, what are the chances of you, if you want to put a number on it, what are the chances of you um, speaking to the committee at this point after sending these letters? And also, would Republicans in the majority consider subpoenaing Democratic members? You know, it's interesting. I had a discussion with the majority leader today, and he talked about if I was to become speaker, and he was concerned about the stuff within the House. I, I would just remind the Democrats, they're the ones who have changed all the rules. They're the ones who broke all tradition. They removed a member of Congress for something they said that person said before they were ever a member of Congress. They pick and choose who could be on committees. They denied a 232-year history of whether the minority could even offer people on a committee. They, they find members based upon what they believe right and wrong. They allowed people to vote with never even being here. They take away the minority's right to even have an amendment on the floor. I think it's the Democrats who changed how the House works. If we happen to keep that same pattern, it would be the Democrats who changed the rules and we just followed them. It's interesting if they would like that or not. Are you going to keep that time? You know, these are all hypotheticals. I think we should definitely see what the outcome has. I do believe the American public is looking for people who will focus on the issues they care most about. We'll make a Congress that actually works for them, not a Congress for their own personal belief to change an election law. Not a Congress that will raise your price of gasoline and cause inflation. Not a, pro not a Congress that makes a border insecure. I think what they're really looking for is a new direction. And I believe in 153 more days that will happen. And it will be a new Congress that works for the American public. And it will follow the Constitution. It will be one that makes us energy independent, bring inflation down, secure our border, make our streets and schools safe again, and yes, we will be stronger and more prosperous.